talk about knowing your constraints. What are some of the limits on your job search? Money. We all need it. If you know what your floor is, if you know what the minimum amount of salary or wage that you can live on is, then unless you know that the job you're talking to has real value for information gathering or skills building, or you really believe that you can negotiate them up, that is not the job search for you. Run your numbers, know your numbers, and hone your job search accordingly. How much time do you have to get another job? How long is your runway? I do a lot of executive coaching work. Talking to people in career transition, I find that people who have not run their numbers either panic and snatch the first job that came their way when they have a substantial cushion, they should be doing a strategic search, they have many months of runway ahead of them. Or people figure, I'm a high powered exec, I can be super picky here. And they fail to notice that they can't pay their mortgage the month after next. They need to get a damn job. Know your numbers, know your runway, and start to adjust for the situation that you are in. About eight years ago, I lost my job. I was, as we say in England, made redundant, as you say in America, let go. I should have seen it coming. I kind of saw it coming. I didn't want to see it coming. And then there it was. Fortunately, I'm very fiscally conservative. But the first weekend after this happened, I sat down with my then husband and we looked at, okay, what are the things that we can cut? What are the bills that we can cut out now? Not three months from now, not once we're absolutely terrified, but what could we start doing now? If you don't know your numbers, you are shortchanging yourself doesn't have to be incredibly sophisticated, just a simple ins and outs. What you got, what you need, hone your job search accordingly. Think about your commute. It, it amuses me. We all grumbled about going home and now we're all grumbling about going back to the office and we all missed our commute because we didn't have edges on our day and we couldn't listen to podcasts anymore. And now we don't want to get back in traffic. If there's one thing that's almost universally true about humans, it's that we love a good grumble. But think really, what sort of commute are you prepared to take on? What impact is that gonna have on your life? What can you sustain? Think about your work schedule. How much do you want to work? How much are you prepared to work? Does it make a difference to you? If your office hours are eight to five or nine to six or eight to six or a split shift, or if you have to do Saturdays, how's all that going to work? Know your constraints. Because the number of times that we look for a job and then we find a job and we've kind of fallen in love with the job and then we notice that line that says some nights and weekends are necessary and we suddenly realize we don't want to work nights and weekends. So know your constraints early, know your parameters and do the work around personal integrity. What are your values? So politics has come up a couple of times on this call, on this meeting and we're in Washington. So if you know that you have a very specific set of political beliefs, don't go hunting in places that conflict with them because it's not going to help you. Even if you got the job because they didn't Google you and they didn't find all that gunk you've been putting up on Facebook for the last six years, then you're probably not going to be happy there. Do the work to figure out what you want and get as close to it as you can and understand that sometimes you're going to have to compromise, but you should do it knowingly with your eyes open and in contextually necessary circumstances. 
So a story I sometimes share many years ago, much earlier in my career, I worked for a large construction company headquartered out of New York. And they, um, they made some very specific charitable donations, not the sort of thing you'd look at in the job search necessarily. Um, I've shared this story before, so I'll be both specific and transparent here. Um, my first week in the office, part of a statement of qualifications going to a client, they wanted to know about our philanthropy, which includes, of course, charitable donations. So I reach out to headquarters in New York and I ask for the list and I get the list and they send me the list. That whole thing about the Englishness. So their single largest political donations in a year um, we're through a huge fundraising dinner for Sinn Féin. I'm not just British, I'm English. To me, Sinn Féin is a terrorist organization. It's the political wing of the IRA. And for an English person, political wing is in a very small font. So I had a huge problem with this. I also really needed the job. And I went home and I did a lot of introspection and we ran some numbers and we figured out, could I just quit? And the answer was no, I couldn't. But I knew what I was doing. I needed the job, I made this compromise. And you better believe with every job search since then, I've looked at philanthropy and culture and where a company puts its money and therefore its voice and support in really different ways. Now this was a culturally appropriate donation for a company that was owned and operated by a large Irish American family. I'm sure it felt really different for them, but I had to analyze how it felt for me. So you're gonna to have to look at choices around integrity and alignment. There are some great, great resources out there. What color is your parachute is a good one for this. And frankly, sometimes just sitting there and asking yourself, what do I actually believe can be a really good tool for this as well. 